Today, we look at a boxer often regarded as the greatest lightweight in boxing history. How good was old master, Joe Gans? Joseph Grant was born on November 25, 1874, in Baltimore, Maryland. Gans stood 5 feet 6 and a half with a 71-inch reach. He had an aggregate weight of 134 pounds for his career. Gans's career spanned from 1893 to 1909. He had 145 wins, 10 losses, and 16 draws. 100 of his wins were by knockout. He also had one no contest and six no decision bouts. His win percentage was 81, and his knockout percentage was 56. Gans is most associated with the lightweight division, which ranges from 127 to 135 pounds. Gans was dubbed the old master due to his exceptional skill. He, at one point, was considered to be the best boxer in the world while active. Like wine, Gans continued to get better at his craft with age and had few rivals at his peak. Gans fought a contingent of the top boxers of his era, largely outperforming them. Gans's first notable fight was on November 18, 1895, in Baltimore, Maryland, when he took on Hall of Fame featherweight world champion Young Griffo of Australia. The fight was prearranged to be a draw if it went the distance. Both fighters played it safe during the contest, which ended in a draw over 10 rounds. On September 21, 1897, Gans would again step in the ring with Young Griffo. The two boxed evenly through the early part of the fight. Midway, each fighter had moments landing vicious shots before ultimately fighting to a 15-round draw. On April 14, 1899, Gans would lace up the gloves to take on the durable George Elbows McFadden in Brooklyn. McFadden used a combination of excellent bodywork behind his stiff left jab to keep Gans honest throughout the fight. McFadden continued to press and secured what the Brooklyn Daily Eagle called a stagey knockout over the bloodied and bruised Gans in the 23rd round. The two men would face each other in a rematch on July 28, 1899, back in Brooklyn in front of around 5,000 spectators. The fight was a high-paced, elbow-filled affair as the two men battled on the inside. McFadden focused on the body, which had previously made him successful but Gans was more aggressive in his return. Gans dropped McFadden twice, but McFadden finished the 25th and final round with an edge. Though many felt that Gans had the better showing, the fight was ruled a draw. Styles make fights, so Gans and Elbows McFadden linked up once again before the end of 1899, when they faced off in a trilogy on Halloween night. McFadden continued an aggressive approach, using his elbows to flail shots as he looked to tear into Gans's body. It would be Gans who made things even as he won a 25-round decision in the rough-and-tumble affair. After knocking out once-beaten Spike Sullivan in February of 1900, Gans would get his first major opportunity in a shot at reigning world lightweight champion Frank Ern of Switzerland. Ern was regarded as one of the sport's most clever boxers, Gans opened as the betting favorite. While it was a title fight, the stipulation was that both men had to weigh in at 133 pounds the day of the fight, two pounds under the lightweight limit. Per the New York Herald, Gans took an early lead in the fight to the dismay of the majority white crowd, showing flashes of brilliance both on the outside and in the clinch. With Hall of Famer Charles Kid McCoy providing advice in his corner, Ern started to make it an even fight as the two changed heavy blows. In the twelfth round of the heated contest, the two men clashed heads, opening a gash over one of Gans's eyes. Gans let it be known that he couldn't see, and the referee was forced to stop the fight allowing Ern to retain his world title. Gans would face off with a familiar foe in Australia's young Griffo on July 10, 1900, this time, Gans would leave no stone unturned as after sending Griffo to the canvas in the first and twice in the seventh, he knocked out the Hall of Famer in the eighth round. On September 7 and October 2 of 1900, Gans would be back in the ring with Elbows McFadden in back-to-back -back fights. Gans would win a six-round newspaper decision in the first fight before drawing with McFadden in the second. 
Gans would have his most high-profile matchup to this point on December 13, 1900, when he met Hall of Famer Terrible Terry McGovern in a 133-pound catchweight fight. McGovern came in at 124 pounds. The matchup seemed to have the makings of a back-and-forth scrap on paper. The action, though, was all McGovern. After taking sustained punishment for a round plus, McGovern knocked out Gans in the second round. Despite the showing, the true story of the fight occurred outside the ring, as Gans alleged to have thrown the fight on purpose. The aftermath of the fight, which took place in Chicago's Illinois, saw both fighters have warrants issued for their arrest for disturbing the peace. This also resulted in legislation banning prize fights in Illinois. The true intentions of Gans in the fight is still hotly debated today. Gans would twice defeat contender Bobby Dobbs in 1901, before again stepping in the ring against George Elbows McFadden on February 17, 1902, picking up a sixth-round newspaper decision victory. On May 12, 1902, Gans would get another shot at the world lightweight title when he rematched Frank Earn in Canada. Gans was confident for the fight and is quoted, expected to win. It wouldn't take long as Gans opened up on Ern early, stretching him on the canvas in the first. Ern was unable to answer the referee's count. With the win, Gans became the new and first African-American lightweight world champion. On June 27, 1902, Gans would put his world title on the line against Elbows McFadden in the final fight of their rivalry. The fight was no contest as Gans dropped McFadden multiple times en route to a third-round TKO victory. On November 7, 1903, Gans would face Hall of Fame trainer and underrated contender Jack Blackburn. Blackburn pulled out a thin newspaper decision over six rounds despite being dropped in the first round. Gans would then match up against one of boxing's greatest to move between weights, the Boston bone crusher Sam Langford. The two men battled on December 8, 1903, in a fight that saw each gain leverage over the course of the contest. In the end, it was Langford who came out on top with a 15-round points win. Gans and Blackburn would meet in a return bout on March 25, 1904. Gans would be in top form this time, as he won a clear decision. On November 30, 1904, Gans would trade blows with a man regarded as the greatest welterweight of all time in the Barbados Demon, Joe Walcott. Walcott had a claim to the world welterweight title at the time and some sources reported Gans as having relinquished his rights to the lightweight title to participate in this fight. The two men battle even early, but Walcott suffered a hand injury around the fourth round. Walcott remained game as the two men fought to a 20-round draw. Gans proceeded into a three-fight series with welterweight champion Mike Twin Sullivan, with the first fight taking place on September 15, 1905. The match was pre-arranged to be a draw if it went the complete 15 rounds. The fight was rolled a draw, though each fighter had favorable moments. Gans and Sullivan would have a return bout on January 19, 1906. The pre-fight weight was set at 142 pounds, and the world welterweight title was at stake. The two men battled hard with each scoring knockdowns. The smaller Gans would show his medal as he knocked Sullivan out in the 16th round. Gans had a claim to the welterweight title with the win, though it didn't change hands due to the weight stipulation. The two men would have an immediate rematch on March 17. Gans again proved to be the better man stopping the bigger Sullivan in the 10th round. Sullivan came in over the welterweight limit, and thus, the title was not at stake in the fight. Again, Gans had a legitimate claim to the title, having defeated Sullivan twice. Gans would face Hall of Famer Harry Lewis on June 15, 1906, in Philadelphia. The fight was ruled a draw though many sources reported that Gans was the better man and won most of the six rounds. Gans fought Jack Blackburn for a final time on June 29, 1906, winning a comfortable newspaper decision over six rounds. He would then put his lightweight title on the line against underrated contender Dave Hawley on July 23, winning a 20-round decision, dropping Hawley along the way. 
This set up Gans for his most famous rivalry on September 3, 1906, when he put his title up against Hall of Fame lightweight, battling Nelson in Coalfield, Nevada. The fight was set up as a fight to the finish. Gans would put on an outstanding performance as he gave Nelson everything he could handle. Frustrated, Nelson repeatedly hit Gans with low blows and other fouls. The bout would be one of the longest on record under the Marquess of Queensbury rules. In the 42nd round, the referee disqualified Nelson after an intentional low blow. Gans retained his title. Gans would face Kid Herman in a fight to the finish, which took place on New Year's Day, 1907. Gans would show his prowess as a ringmaster as he knocked Herman out cold with a huge right hand in the eighth round. It would take Herman's handlers nearly 30 minutes to revive him. Gans and Nelson would face off for the second of their trilogy matches on Independence Day, 1908. The two fighters put on an exciting war in the rematch, each focused on settling the score. Nelson took advantage and knocked Gans out in the 17th round to become the new world lightweight champion. Two months later, on September 9th, the two men would meet for the final time. Nelson would defend his title by knocking Gans out in the 21st round. We now know that at this point of his career, Gans had started to show deterioration due to contracting tuberculosis. Gans would fight once more in 1909, but retired at 34, with the disease leaving him as little more than a shell of himself. Gans would retire as one of the greatest who stood at the top of the echelon in his prime. Gans faced seven Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against Hall of Famer Battling Nelson Hall of Famer Harry Lewis Hall of Famer Sam Langford Hall of Famer Terry McGovern Hall of Famer Joe Walcott Hall of Famer Young Griffo Hall of Famer Frank Earn Kid Herman Mike Twin Sullivan and Hall of Fame trainer Jack Blackburn Joe Gans died on August 10, 1910, at 35, from tuberculosis. Gans is a fighter who set the standard for all boxer punchers to grace the sport thereafter. He had the most elite skills and natural ability. He forever remains a boxing immortal. Gans was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990.